Hello everyone, my name is James Coleman and I'm the Maxwell Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. The Centre for Design Technology staff and students provide courses, equipment, consultancy and research in product design at the University of Brighton. Hello everyone and today I'd like to cover the f-stop inside Maxwell Studio and this is something which I'm probably going to be talking about a lot in these videos. However, um, this is just a quick video to go over exactly what f-stop is or exactly what it does. Um, f-stop is another value which is inside Maxwell Studio because it's a throwback from real-world photography. The f-stop is the aperture value of a camera and I'm not actually going to go into the physics of exactly what an f-stop is because it's quite complicated and you don't really need to know it if you're only using Maxwell Studio to make renders. But in a nutshell, what f-stop does is it defines the depth of field inside a render. And a high f-stop means a high depth of field, and a low f-stop means a low depth of field. Now the f-stop value itself is found in uh, cameras. Uh, sorry, uh, make sure you've got camera selected in the cameras manager. And then it's found in um, the camera parameters optics panel over here. And at the moment, my scene has an f-stop of 32. And 32 is very, very, well, it's not very, very high, but it's quite high compared to what you might use in a real-world um, real situation. Uh, 32 is quite high. Uh, but uh, this is a jewellery render, and I've deliberately picked um, a jewellery piece of jewellery because, uh, especially in uh, jewellery renders, you will play around with f-stop an awful lot because it can create a lot of effects, and also because jewellery in particular is just so small. Uh, generally you will need a high f-stop to um, make sure all of the the entirety of your subject is in focus because um, the target distance when you're doing small objects will be so low because they're very close to the camera um, that that uh, will also help to uh, define the depth of field and the, the lower the target distance the lower the depth of field is going to be and things are going to be easily out or in focus basically it's going to be quite sensitive I have got a focal length of 50 in this scene that might be, well that definitely is a bit low for jewellery but it was just to create this um, effect uh, because although uh, most of the time uh, the human eye will be used to seeing a high focal length in jewellery images using a low focal length can create uh, an extra bit of uh, interest and creativity, whatever. So now I've put on the fire engine to um, render our image, and what I'm going to do is close out these um, windows, make the fire window a bit bigger, well, quite a lot bigger actually, mm -hmm. and um, just quickly go into perspective mode to uh, take you through this scene, actually. <laughs> Make the viewport bigger now. Um, right. So this is the scene. Um, it's lit by um, this high dynamic range image surrounding us, nice big um, plane above us, and also a couple of uh, soft points around us, and a little bit of light from the bottom. And also this uh, piece of uh, archway, if you like. This is also um, an emitter. These planes are emissive, so it's providing more light. And then you've got this um, floor here, and finally the well, the ring itself and our camera. Right, so I'll go back to the camera view, and this time I definitely do want to make the fire window bigger. Give it a double click just to um, refresh it, and uh, make sure it's uh, nice resolved. Gonna double check in the options settings uh, yeah that's okay it does look a bit um, a bit blurry to me but uh, whatever okay so at the moment I've got um, an f-stop of 32 and that's kind of making everything uh, nicely in focus one thing I would point out about the um, the focal point or the target distance as uh, Maxwell calls it, is that if you can see here in uh, the viewport that it is just touching the very beginning of the ring so the very start of the ring is going to be in focus and then uh, gradually out of focus as you go further back that's how I set up this scene to be 
and refresh fire again. And uh, what I'm going to do now is make sure exposure is locked. That's always you know, that's key. That's critical. And then just drop down the f-stop. And I'm going to go very, very low indeed. Uh, 5.6 is probably the lowest I would ever go um, for an f-stop. Uh, that's just me personally, to be honest. And you'll see just how blurry the um, the ring becomes. Now I've only got you know these uh, maybe two or three diamonds are in focus and then the rest is blurred out and again that's how you achieve uh, depth of field in Maxwell uh, there's no other settings to worry about it's literally just uh, define your f-stop and Maxwell will do the rest you can go mad with the f-stop, you know, there's nothing to stop you doing uh, an f-stop of one um, but it is going to be really blurry by that stage um, and you're going to have a tiny tiny depth of field uh, and again, there's nothing to stop you going the other way as well, you know, something like 300, um, absolutely massive, everything should be uh, beautifully and crisp uh, by the time you get to an f-stop of that. Um, I don't know if you can physically get an f-stop value that high um, in the real world. You can get very, very low f-stops, um, like, you know, like one, but um, they're not very convenient and they're not very uh, common. I think the only... Uh, case where I've seen an f-stop of one is like fisheye lenses and stuff like that so you don't normally encounter them. I'm going to put mine back to 32. One last thing that I'd like to go over is this information here which is the um, uh, focal depth, near plane, far plane and depth of field. Uh, this information is found under display info so make sure that's enabled and the focal depth is the same as the um, target distance. The near plane is uh, where everything after the near plane should be in focus, everything before the far plane should be in focus, and the depth of field is the distance between the near and far. Now the scale of the scene is actually throwing off these numbers a little bit, so what I'm going to do is right click and auto focus. So I'm no longer focused to uh, the ring, I'm now focused to the floor behind the ring basically. So now it's saying that my uh, Focal depth is 0 0.075, this information is always in meters by the way. The um, near distance is 0 0.074 and the far is 0 0.077, so my depth of field is 3 millimeters. So basically there, are th there, there is 3 millimeters um, either, sorry, no not either side, but in total. Uh, so 1.5 millimeters either side of this point where th um, everything is in focus. Um, because of the scale of this scene, uh, like I say, it's throwing it off a little bit so um, that's kind of complicating things but that kind of shows you that actually f-stop of 32 in this scene uh, is only providing three millimeters worth of uh, focal depth if I were to um, focus to a farther away point you can see the depth of field increases that's why the um, target distance or the focal depth um, does uh, help to define your um, depth of field. The depth of field itself is nothing really without proper focus and um, like I said in this example I'm actually focused onto the very very um, uh, tip if you like of the ring and the way that that's done is simply um, in the camera mode with the camera selected uh, right click focus to and then select the point on the ring which you actually want to be in focus and that of course works for anything focus to the back of the ring uh, will focus to the back of the ring and so now these are in focus whereas the front is slightly blurred. The camera reticule in the screen is showing red that means that whatever I'm looking at is currently uh, behind the uh, depth field it's basically warning me that the things in red are um, out of focus and if I were to focus to the back of the floor, it, the reticule turns blue and it says that everything, or anything that the reticule is currently looking at is before the um, depth of field, basically. So um, it, it's blurred again. That's essentially what it's saying. If I right click and auto focus, it will focus to whatever is currently right in the center of that camera reticule. And uh, you can just about see that it is red and blue, saying that these areas, although it is currently focused to the center of the reticule, because of the low depth of field in this scene, these areas are actually out of focus. 
That's pretty much it for um, f-stop. Again, the actual values for f-stop are um, kind of uh, set in stone, and I would recommend that you use those because um, uh, that's what the customer expects to see, should we put it that way. I'll link to the Wikipedia page uh, with the list of common f-stops. And remember that uh, if you want everything to be in focus, use a high f-stop. If you want it to be nice and blurred, use a lower f-stop. And also remember to f focus to the point which you want, and as a reminder, that is ooh, moving the camera, excuse me. And uh, as a reminder, it is right click in the viewport and focus to and select a point you want, so back of the ring, or focus to, so click in the viewport, the front of the ring, or auto focus, which will focus it to the center of the camera reticule. So at the moment, it's um, auto-focused to the floor. If I move the camera and auto-focus again it will now focus to the ring. Thanks very much. See you again soon. For more information about Maxwell Render training at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com